Hi everybody and welcome to this week's video. Unfortunately, it is way more of an adventure than I would have liked. And this happened. <laughs> Why siren get better soon? Sounds like a freaking tractor. <sighs> Just doing some work, making some tea. The sun is out. And look at that, it's just beautiful. I love it because it lights up my whole kitchen, and the house just looks stunning. I've had a little cocktail. Yeah, doing some editing. So I was on an adventure, setting off on a road trip up island. I'm on Vancouver Island at the moment. Amanda has come to visit and I am heading north. I had booked in at a campground to stay a couple of nights uh, to explore some of the Oceanside area and then I was like oh I'll head out to the back roads because I really want to film some drone shots of the van and then uh. I'm heading back to town um, to start heading up island and I'm just heading through some urban areas it's about 3 p.m. schools are out so I slow down at the traffic lights and I'm paused at a stop sign and then I go to take off and it goes rim bang it's a terrible place to be broken down I'm on the side of the road broken down which is a scary feeling Hopefully there will be a tow truck arriving soon to help me out because this engine is making some terrible noises. My van just went clunk and started making terrible noises. <laughs> I'm on hold with BCAA but because this is a dually at the back, two wheels, they may or may not do anything about it so I will need to get a tow truck Fuck. hi there I, I would like to request a tow okay what's the vehicle it is a 1999 uh, Ford step van a Ford what sorry step van or box truck it's got dualies at the back what's wrong with it the engine just started making this horrendous noise, and so I just need to get towed. Okay, what's the location? This could cost me 500 bucks just to get towed. <sighs> so expensive. Anyway, I'm not having a great time. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, is this what we're doing? Yes. Oh, it's completely different than what I was told. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a Grumman's man. Well, will he even be able to tow me? They think it's one of these kind of vans, and it's a bit bigger. Quack. It does run and move, or it? I well, it I did. Will, it I did when I got get, when I got here. I can tr I can turn it on and show you, but I'd rather do that as soon as I know where I'm going. For sure, yeah, no. Um, I will have to be picking it up from the front. Okay. Um, so either I can try to winch it out and pick it up from the front, but I would just be blocking the, mm -hmm. the road here. Um, yeah, I don't know if it runs enough to go back like 10 feet. Or... Okay, well, let's close the engine. Um, and then it does turn on, but it sounds terrible. Okay. So I could probably try and reverse it to line up with you more. But I really was like, there's something wrong with the engine badly, and I'm sure, trying yeah. to drive it as little as possible. Yep. 
Oh, that's fine. Ooh. Did it just die? Or no, I turned it off? it off. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it might be like a belt or, or some kind of plug. Yeah. Um, okay. So I should try and move it back? If you can. Oh. Unless you'd like me to. That's kind of like, it, it's just what it sounds like to me. Um, something might be loose, like, you know, there's lots of different, like, hoses, different plugs, different valves. I mean, it could be an exhaust hose of some sort. Right, something like that. Because that's that sounds like raw exhaust hose kind of noise, it sounds like it? it sounds like something's escaping from somewhere, so yeah. I, it's out of, out of Well, that's nature. less scary than, like, what I thought <laughs> is I'd blow in a cylinder. For sure, yeah. I'm not a mechanic. I can't put the drive shaft back in for legal reasons. Yeah. Um, but they've ta taught you how to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier taking it out, not putting it back in. Okay, <laughs> so I don't... pay for a tow down island and I've now learnt that because this is an odd type of vehicle I do have RV insurance but depending on who I speak to in the customer service they understand or they don't understand next time I get somebody who doesn't understand I hang up and I call back and I get somebody who's just able to help me I realize that my current mechanic is actually away for the whole month I can't just the the tow truck to drop it off at the mechanics shop or I will be living in this van in the big back of a, a mechanics shop for several weeks and I don't have the luxury of time for that I let sleep overnight called the insurance the next day got a second tow truck and found another mechanic who I don't usually go to who wasn't too far and this is what happened getting the van picked up and towed a second time. I have never been more anxious seeing my house precariously perched than I was here. Oh, it was so horrible. Tow truck number two. Like a freaking tractor. It's not good. 
I hope it's nothing serious. <laughs> this air coming out of the engine where it shouldn't, so something is broken or cracked. <laughs> I got enough things out of it. I'm staying with very kind folks who care about me deeply, so at least I've got a roof over my head from now, but when your home is broken, it's... <laughs> you have no idea how much it's gonna cost. No idea what's wrong. <sighs> um, okay, so we did a complete inspection on your truck for you. Yeah. These are nice little expensive trucks, you know. Because <laughs> so, yeah. uh, we have people all the time that they've either bought them or what, looking to buy them and that kind of stuff. I assume you're not selling yours. No, that's my home. <laughs> oh, is that your home? Oh, so you're like hanging out with somebody else now while we're yes. at you. dealing with your home. Okay. Yeah. So you need it back in a hurry then. A little bit. I remember I was telling you that most people would have wanted to take the engine head off, send it into the machine shop. The machine shop, they're all back, back now, like you're seven to ten days. If you're lucky, if you're a really good shop and they and they like you, they might pitch you in sooner. So ordinarily it would have cost, uh, the machine to do the head and put the new insert in is pretty cheap, like 250 bucks. But most shops would have took the head off. So the labor to take the engine apart to the head and send it into the machine shop back would have been $2,000 labor. And the head gasket is about $637. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, the job would have been probably $2,900 for most other people. Yeah. Some mechanics really just don't understand that you might have an interest in understanding your vehicle. And it's important, I think, to ask. And I've really noticed that some mechanics just will explain something simply and some mechanics will go all flowery about justifying why they cost this much or how much a cut part costs or oh i'm doing you such a huge favor and inherently that doesn't make me trust them there's either enough meat left over to do the proper repair or we have to send it out in your case we because we have the proper tools as far as the rest of the vehicle goes obviously you need to tune up like we told you yeah yeah, uh, seven out of your eight coils are broken. All your plugs were loose. Whoever, I don't know if you have had the vehicle, never had it tuned up, but whoever did your tune-up last didn't tighten the spark plugs enough, oh. and they all worked themselves loose. Now, you didn't damage the seven other holes. Yeah, finally. thank goodness. So you, yeah, no kidding. Otherwise, you would have been really looking at money. Well, we, but I so we're going to replace all the, when you say coils, do you mean the spark plugs, or do you mean no, the spark the plugs and the cords? Yeah, it, 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 back in the old days, I don't know how mechanical you are, but back in the old days, you would have your spark plugs, mm -hmm. and then you'd have your spark plug wires going to your distributor cap. Yeah, so my, previ cap. my previous van was a 77, and I okay, used to yeah. seven, service that one regularly, so that's where yeah. my knowledge reference comes from. Okay, yeah, so back in the day, those vehicles, they would have like a distributor cap, and all the spark plug wires would come out and go to the, 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 the spark plugs on the side of the motor. Yes. On, on this particular vehicle, the spark plugs go straight down the top, yep. and then there's a little tiny boot, and then there's coils on top. Each, oh. each plug has one, yeah, has one coil on each plug. Okay, okay. Yeah, so there's no spark plug wires, but there's, uh, instead of one coil, there's eight coils. Okay. Or, yeah, so, yeah. So that adds up in a hurry, of course. Like what is the total estimate? So if it's 800 for coils, two something for the repair kit, what, and then the oil change, what are we looking at so far? Okay, so the oil change, I think is 129.95. I tell you what, I'll line up the parts and give you a call back. So then the parts come to 1187, the labor comes to 562, before taxes 1749, government is here helping us. So at the end of the day, it's 1959.45. Okay. I blew a spark plug clean out of the head of the engine. <sighs> My mechanic is away, so I have another mechanic helping out, and he said he had a kit to fix it. So, wish me luck. I struggle when somebody dismisses me by the sound of my voice or how I look and doesn't explain to me what is going on. Often, I will interrupt them and say no i am mechanically minded please explain to me what's happening um, and i encourage you all to learn about your vehicles 
and ask for that information. Knowledge is power. Going into a place knowing what you're asking for or understanding what's going on changes everything. What was wrong with it and then the labor to fix it, including doing the whole kit that, that we have. And it's funny because I found I found three places, they didn't want to do it, they have, and they couldn't give me a quote. Anyway. Why did you bother doing that? Look at us, we're doing it! We're driving out of the driveway! Will it fit? Oh, it's tight. <laughs> okay, little van, we can do it. Continue on British to be in the city but I'm heading to a co-working space today because I've got to do some work and my van is in the mechanic and I need internet and I make some calls so here I am out of the forest and into urban areas it's so weird so on your truck yes. um my check engine light yes the code is for the idle air control yeah um in the old days in the 90s we would just buy a new idle air control from Ford and put it in there and yeah. it usually solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did a little bit of diagnostics because uh, like I want to make sure the power going to the idle air control. It obviously functions. Like I can use my scanner and command the idle air control. You don't even need to know, need to know what it is. Oh, you're a mechanical. I'm mechanical. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's, I love it's, this shit. so it's an idle air control valve and it's an electric motor that controls how much air is going into the motor and that's yes. how it controls your idle, not like the old days with a screw. Yeah, I remember the screw on my freaking yeah. GMC. Exactly, so the screws are gone. It's 77. No, it's this idle air control motor. A circuit, there's something wrong with that circuit. It's obviously working because I can command it off and on yeah. and stall out the engine. Like I can make it rev up and I can make it rev down with my like programming in it. Yeah. But if I go for a drive, the check engine light comes on, it's that code again, okay? Uh -huh. Usually, when it's a, a broken wire, usually the idle air control doesn't work. Like yeah. It's a, a symptom of it not yeah. running well. So I truly believe it is the idle air control motor. Okay. Here's the catch. There isn't one to replace it. That's a lot of talking into that. So I can order an aftermarket one. Yeah. It's probably not going to work. They're okay. junk. The one you want to put in there is a Ford one, and they're obsolete. Huh. So I don't know what to do. So I put it back together and texted you and said, come get your truck. I'm going to sleep on it and see if I can come up with a solution for you. Yeah. yeah. In the meantime, you're safe to drive. You're not, okay. It's not going to stall out of you. It's not dangerous. Good. My van has a Ford E350 5.4 liter V8 engine in it. But it's a 9099 and I'm starting to realize a 9099 is a slightly older model engine. That's what I can afford. But it turns out that some large manufacturers are starting to no longer support certain parts for engines that are older if it doesn't continue in their ranges which is 
frustrating if the aftermarket parts aren't quite up to scratch. So I'm looking for an idle air control motor. And what I think I'm going to do in the future is get a code reader or a scanner for my engine so that I can keep an eye on the codes that are coming out. The check, if the check engine light is not able to be turned off, I need to be able to be aware of the health of my engine. If the light is on and new codes come up, I'm not going to know. So I'm going to look at and if you've got any recommendations for Ford engine code readers, please put them in the comments below. I'm really keen. And if you know of any Ford manufactured idle air control parts that you might have access to, you'll be saving my life. Maybe one day I'm just going to upgrade the whole damn engine so that it can last for many, many, many years. But that time is a long way from now. Thank you so much for watching this emotional roller coaster of a video with me. I'm so glad it's over. I'm so glad I have some sort of resolution and way forward and a plan. If you really enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you've got some suggestions or recommendations, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. I read all of your comments. Um, and I'll see you next week on a very exciting adventure. I love y'all. Bye.